Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines overnight, a multi-vehicle crash sending at least two people to the hospital, shutting down traffic on the north side. We're going to explain. Plus, lawmakers in Washington work on a last-minute deal to keep the government funded through the end of the year. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 56 degrees, a crisp start to your morning, a crisp start to October. Good morning. It is Thursday. October 1st. Happy October. Yes, happy October. That's my favorite month. I'm very excited. Halloween. Halloween, my daughter's birthday, my cousin's birthday. Pumpkin spice. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And the weather. Yes. Definitely. Uh, it, it's once again, yeah, just a fantastic prize winning kind of a morning. Maybe not quite as cool. Yesterday we were at 53 already at this time. Got down to 51, so we're not going to be quite as cool as yesterday. Still well below normal. Fantastic, spectacular sunrise in store today. Sunshine all day long. Today is going to be the warmest day that we've seen. The temperatures have been staying in the mid 80s the past couple of days. We're going to be up in the upper 80s, getting close to 90 uh, later on today. Got some 40s out in portions of the Hill Country, uh, 54 in Helotus, and 57 up the road in New Braunfels. We'll still drop down a couple of more degrees this morning and all the allergens are on the low side. Temperatures, yeah, you definitely need a, a jacket once again, going for 55 for a, a low temperature. So, you know, a degree or two here and there. This is going to be right around 7 o'clock this morning. And then again, another huge warm up. Yesterday, we went from 51 all the way up to 87 degrees and, you know, what, 35, 36 degrees or so. We're going to be doing the same thing again today. Some folks are going to be seeing a 40 degree rise in temperature today. Just absolutely beautiful. Subtle changes as we go into the weekend. Still fantastic weather, but subtle changes. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic on this Thursday morning. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. All right, a couple of accidents we're dealing with right now. First one is going to be North Loop 1604 West at Stone Oak Parkway. It's a two vehicle accident there. Now there's not details whether it's on Stone Oak Parkway southbound or going 16 1604. So still getting more information on that, but this accident has been there for a little while and hopefully gets cleared up very soon. This accident's about to get cleared up. This is southbound West Loop 1604 at Alamo Ranch Parkway. That one's just about cleared up, so no worries there if you're heading southbound 1604. All right, trans guide right now. Here we go. 35 at Pine looking really good, flowing smoothly as can be there. Uh, and we have 10 at Dominion where we had some construction earlier, but it's now good to go. Max, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police say a five vehicle crash ends with two people in the hospital and one person in jail. Take a look. This was a scene on southbound 281 between Thousand Oaks and Brook Hollow. This is the north side of town. Police on the scene telling us around 1030 last night, a red vehicle re rear ended a black vehicle that led to a collision with another vehicle along with an SUV. Several lanes of traffic had to be closed as a result. Police tell us one man taken to jail on suspicion of a DWI. Two people taken to the hospital, luckily though, only with minor injuries. A man fighting in the hospital for his life this morning after the driver of a van hit his motorcycle. Now, it happened at the intersection of West Houston and Zarzamora around 830. Officers tell us that the driver of a white van pulled out of a parking lot before hitting the man on a motorcycle. Police say that motorcyclist has life threatening injuries. They say the driver of the van was taken into custody and is facing a possible charge of DWI. And San Antonio police looking for a gunman on the city's east side this morning. All of this after a vehicle with several bullet holes was found last night, along with a victim who had to be taken to a hospital. This all happened on Hershey Drive and not too far from Rigsby and Loop 410. Officers not yet giving us a description of who's responsible. When it comes to the pandemic here at home, Bear County is seeing another increase in our seven day average. We now stand at 178. One new death was reported. The city says the seven day average is a more accurate measure of how cases move from day to day. You can see that average shown in white dotted lines and how it relates to the red bars, which show how many COVID-19 cases were reported each day. Overall, we will continue to be on the low end. The number of people in the hospital is going down, though. 212 COVID-19 patients remain hospitalized. 81 are in the intensive care unit and 30 are on ventilators. 
In your morning headlines, by a sweeping bipartisan vote, the Senate sending a bill to President Donald Trump's desk to fund the government through at least December 11th. This vote averting the possibility of a government shutdown as the new fiscal year starts today. The temporary extension will set the stage for a lame duck session of Congress later this year, where the agenda will be largely determined by the outcome of the upcoming presidential election. The House passed the bill just last week. The Associated Press says President Donald Trump's former campaign manager and former San Antonio resident Brad Parscale is stepping away from the re-election campaign. The announcement comes days after Florida law enforcement officials say he threatened to harm himself. Parscale was demoted in July but remained part of the campaign, helping run digital operations. His company was previously based in San Antonio. In a statement released to Politico, Parscale said, quote, I am stepping away from my company and any role in the campaign for the immediate future to focus on my family and get help dealing with the overwhelming stress, end quote. And the head of the Federal Aviation Administration getting into the cockpit to test the changes made to the Boeing 737 MAX. The FAA chief... Steve Dixon piloted the grounded jetliner in Seattle just yesterday. Fe federal regulators evaluating proposed safety changes to this aircraft. The plane's been grounded worldwide since, remember, last March after a pair of deadly crashes ended with 346 people dead. The 18-month grounding has cost Boeing at least $18 billion and has missed a series of target dates for getting approval for a plane to again carry passengers. Dixon is a former airline pilot who flew earlier versions of the 737. He says he has some, some suggestions for new changes now that he has flown the updated version. And time now, 436, 56 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA. Look, Max. Oh, no. The return this is of it. the murder hornet. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Why three new sightings of this rare, deadly insect is raising concerns, understandably. Yeah, 2020 just getting better by the day. <laughs> All right, next, we already talked about the 737 Max, but we have the latest on major airline layoffs as American Airlines and United say they're going to start furloughing employees after lawmakers failing to reach a new deal. And yay, looking out with live cam, 56 degrees. Uh, not as cool as it was yesterday, but still very nice. Enjoy this weather. We're going to check in with Mike to see how long it will last in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Obviously, this pandemic has taken a toll in numerous ways. And this morning, tens of thousands of airline industry workers waking up without a job. And as airlines wait for Congress to act, it could be the end of a long career for some workers. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, more than 40,000 airline workers are out of a job, furloughed or laid off after federal funding ran out at midnight. Past October 1st, my future is like a big black hole. Annette Halla has worked as a flight attendant for United Airlines for the last seven years. She worked her last flight one week ago. I dreamed of being a flight attendant when I was a little girl, so my dreams came true. Um, I have my dream job, and so I have been asking myself, like, what do you do when you lose your dream job? Where do you go from there? Um, I don't have any answers right now. Back in March, the airlines, rocked by the pandemic, received $25 billion from the U.S. government. Now they're asking Congress for $25 billion more. At Delta, we're looking at potentially 2,000 furloughs in our pilot ranks if we don't get the, uh, the grant from the government or, indeed, if we don't find a, a solution with our union. And now controversy brewing over the cruise industry. Word overnight that the CDC is extending the no-sale order, banning passenger cruises from U.S. ports through the of October. But according to the website Axios, CDC Director Robert Redfield has pushed to extend the order until February of next year. But that plan was blocked by Vice President Mike Pence. In a statement regarding the no sale order, the White House insists that the coronavirus task force is following the data and the science. The CDC, meanwhile, has no comment. As for the airlines, they say they'll recall their workers if Congress reaches a stimulus deal. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 441, 56 degrees out. And when it comes to getting rid of your pet's hair, like everywhere, <laughs> not all vacuums are up to the task. Just ahead, we're gonna tell you which ones will work the best at keeping your home clean. And next, why new sightings of the so-called, you wanna say this one? Murder hornets. The murder hornets. <laughs> why they are causing concern among scientists, we'll explain. 
And welcome back. It's 444. There are new concerns about murder hornets after three new sightings of the invasive insect. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, three new sightings of that rare, deadly insect known as the murder hornet, raising new concerns. It is confirmation that the, the hornet has spread. And it is a question of, well, is that the only location or are there some other locations as well? We just do not know. The new discoveries coming just as one study warns the invasive species has the potential to spread rapidly throughout parts of the Pacific Northwest if it's not wiped out soon. The reason that people are so frightened by this is because it's unfamiliar to them. They may be unfamiliar here in the U.S., but giant hornets have a dangerous reputation elsewhere. Native to Asia, they were first spotted in Washington state late last year. Since then, 12 sightings in that same coastal area. So is it too late to stop the spread? We'll tell you what the experts are saying coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Okay, so anything can look scary <laughs> when you zoom in 12 times, but yes. to put it in perspective when someone was holding it, I was like, oh, uh, Those are really big. Yes, yeah. They're very scary looking. Yeah, it almost looks not real, but they are real. Yeah. yeah no. sorry, sorry, Max. I'm out on murder <laughs> hornets. All right. <laughs> Speaking of animals, animal shelters and breeders seeing an increased demand for new pets and pet owners. Well, obviously, mm -hmm. you know the hassles of cleaning up after pet hair. Yeah, there's that too. So 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at which vacuums are up to the task. Kara Delaney and her husband adore their new puppy, but the fur he leaves behind, not so much. A lot of his fur gets kind of pushed into the corner, whether it's from the fan or just us moving around. So we have to be very mindful of kind of catching all the fur. If your dog or cat is sharing more than unconditional love, you may need a new vacuum. Consumer Reports put several to the test. They embedded Maine Coon cat fur into carpet. We use Maine Coon cat fur because it's long and thick and has a clingy quality that makes it difficult for our test vacuums to pick up. And then they ran each test vacuum until the fur was gone. Poor performers get the fur caught up in the brush roll or we'll leave it behind on the carpet. Here are some of the top performers for uprights. The Dyson Ball Animal 2. It's bagless and excels at picking up the pet hair and dust. This melee canister got excellent ratings for picking up pet hair and cleaning bare floors. And it was among the best at containing dust particles. As for stick vacs, CR put them to a modified fur test. The Shark Apex Uplight Liftaway is a corded stick vacuum that did an excellent job lifting pet hair from carpet. A built-in mechanism helps remove hair from the brush roll, and it's good for couch cushions where your furry friend might just hang out. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, so you have a dog named Gordo. <laughs> yes. We Do you have any direct relation to this story? Uh, well, you know what? As far as shedding, I can't complain. He's mm. not that bad. He does shed a little bit, but not not as bad as some other you know, good. pets. So. Knock on wood. There we, we got go. A good, we got a good concerning the vacuum stuff. Everything else? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take a look at the roadways. Busy morning already. Yeah, definitely busy, Max. But thank goodness one of the accents is cleared up. But we got a new accent to, to worry about now. It's going to be westbound U.S. Highway 90. Now, it says at military but I think it's a little past Callahan, in between Callahan and military there, not necessarily at 410 where it's uh, populated here. So just keep that in mind for heading westbound U.S. Highway 90. This accident, North Loop 1604 West at Stone Oak Parkway, that's about cleared up now. Looks good there if you're heading down in that direction. All right, here is U.S. 90 at Callahan. I don't think that those are uh, police units. I think it's just a construction sign there. Uh, but this is where the accident is, somewhere in this area. So just, like I said, keep it in mind if you are headed westbound U.S. Highway 90. All right. Thank you so much. Last time I was here during the week, mm -hmm. we were happy if it got under 80. Oh, yes, we were. <laughs> we were super excited. And now we're in the 50s. This is even better. Mike. Yeah, the past few days. And the nice thing about, you know, the first front that we had a couple of weeks ago, which was wonderful, but it lasted a day. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. But this it, one. It was a nice treat. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice little, little sample, an appetizer. But this has been a full meal of just, you know, wonderful weather. And look at that picture. Wow, that is just gorgeous. Just take your camera, turn it sideways, please. But thank you so much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got some uh, stars showing up out there looking off to the east right now. And if you look off to the west, we're going to try and get this camera swung around. You can still see the beautiful full moon. It is full today. 
and it's been obviously big and bright the past couple of days, but technically full today. And so the next full moon is going to be on the 31st, and that is going, I mean, perfect timing for Halloween. And also that will be considered a blue moon, second, uh, second full moon in a calendar month. So humidity, dew points, still very low. Anytime you're below 60, uh, it's fantastic out there. Think back, though, to a couple of days ago when we had these numbers down in the 30s, low 30s and 20s. So there's been a, a bit more humidity. As a matter of fact, just compared to 24 hours ago, the dew point has gone up five degrees. That's not much. We're still in the 40s. It's still comfortable, but that's going to be the trend is to have dew points come up a little bit more over the next few days. And so going in toward the weekend, we'll be up around upper 50s, about 60. Still not bad at all. Nothing to complain about. Uh, that's going to hold low temperatures up though because you can't drop down below what the dew point temperature is. So that will keep us right around 60, low 60s over the weekend. Still very pleasant mornings. And then we get a little quick nudge of kind of some drier air coming on in here starting off next week, but still fantastic weather all the way through into next week. The one downside, and I hate to bring this up when we're talking about such beautiful weather, but there is not a drop of rain in sight, not only short term, but also long term, because you look at the national satellite picture, there's nothing out there. I mean, we've got a little bit up there around the Great Lakes. That's the same low, really, that's been spinning around and helped to pull in the uh, the front and the cooler air around here. But yeah, that that's it. The high pressure is really dominating things. We still have this nice northwesterly airflow in the atmosphere, and that's going to remain going in through the weekend, even though we have some of the um, surface differences, if you will, with a little more humidity around here, slightly warmer temperatures. Still, you know, overall, great stretch of weather. 80 today at noon, sunny skies, and then high temperature today into the upper 80s, which means a lot of uh, some low 90s in the Rio Grande Valley as well. And then tomorrow we get a little bit of a little bit of a push or kind of a, a check, if you will, on the temperature. So that'll hold us in the mid 80s with the extra humidity around here. We'll have some morning clouds then starting in the weekend going into next week and temperatures about normal. Basically getting into next week, though, leaning toward the warmer side, mm -hmm. a couple of degrees above normal, about 90 by Wednesday layers car wash. <laughs> Yeah, I'm taking away. Yes. From oh, that's true. You, you know, and the second one I've been thinking about every single day, but haven't gotten around to doing it. Yeah, yeah. get your money's worth. But once yeah. you wash your car, I mean, it's going to magically rain. So. That's what always happens. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, there's a three percent of a shower. I'm the shower. You know what? <laughs> Let's hope <That's laughs> that, that we could because, yeah, it's it's been a while. Thanks, Thank Mike. Thank you. Time now, 452. 56 degrees out. And coming up next, country music star Shania Twain celebrating 25 years since the release of a, one of the biggest albums of all time. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Thursday. A country music star is celebrating a big milestone and more details about a movie about the making of one of my favorites, The Godfather. Very good. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> Country superstar Shania Twain celebrating 25 years since the release of The Woman in Me, the Grammy-winning album that changed her life and at the time would become the best-selling country album by a woman. I was a poor kid, so, and then a struggling artist all of those years until this finally happened. So uh, when you say monumental in my life, that would be the perfect word. Tomorrow, she's out with a deluxe reissue of The Woman in Me with all kinds of extras, remixes, and live versions. I'm going to make them an offer they can't refuse. An offer they can't refuse for a couple of actors for a movie about the making of The Godfather. Oscar Isaac will star as director Francis Ford Coppola. Jake Gyllenhaal is producer Robert Evans. Francis and The Godfather is separate from a similar behind-the-scenes Godfather miniseries coming to CBS All Access. There's a new piece of Kevin Hart's heart. He and wife Aniko Hart welcoming a baby girl named Kaori Mai. Aniko made the announcement on Instagram. This is their second child together. Hart has two children from his previous marriage. You were reborn. And happy birthday, Captain Marvel. Oscar-winning actress Brie Larson is 31 today, while Lovecraft Country star Journey Smollett is 34. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. I wanted to do the, I knew it was you, Fredo. <laughs> but I, my yeah, close, right. close. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 456, 56 degrees out. And still ahead in our next half hour, the latest on the vote 2020 presidential race as President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden take their debate stage demeanor to the campaign trail. Plus, the popular travel booking site Airbnb, a unique destination available to visit, visit 
why you're going to want to be interested and why you should go there. We'll explain. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, heavy smoke coming from a local business just west of downtown overnight. We're going to explain why. And coming up, more fallout from what's being called the worst debate in U.S. history. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is 56 degrees. It is nice. Enjoy this weather because it's going to kind of go away for a little bit. Oh, but. you're stealing Mike's thunder. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> oh, <laughs> I tried. I, I get you know, it. We tried to I be get it. That's totally. That's all right. It's anyway, <laughs> good morning. It is Thursday, October 1st. Happy October. Big month yes, for you. Yes, I love October. Do you want to show off the earrings? Yes, these are my Halloween earrings. I'm already celebrating. So I love it for Halloween, mm -hmm. my daughter's birthday, mm -hmm. my friend's birthday, my cousin's birthday, and the great weather. What can we? What more can we ask for? Yeah, the weather is absolutely fantastic, and she was talking about some changes, but it's not anything big, just some subtle changes, uh, but we're still enjoying some beautiful weather, gorgeous afternoons, uh, just open up the windows once again. We are at 56 degrees right now, still below normal, not as, as cool as yesterday. Yesterday, if you recall, we were at uh, 53, 52, we bottomed out at 51 degrees, won't be as cool, but still grab a jacket. I mean, it, it's chilly out there, dew points at, uh, at 44 as of right now, and we are going to be up to uh, 89 degrees later on today. So just a little, maybe a degree or two above normal, but again, still fantastic out there. The aquifer did uh, drop down just one tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours and the allergens, everything is on the light side. We do still have some temperatures around the area that are in the 40s out there in portions of the hill country. Kerrville's at 47 degrees, Fredericksburg 48 and 59 in Rock Springs just fantastic can't beat it and throughout the rest of today well again clear cool wonderful this morning plenty of sunshine upper 80s to low 90s later on today so you know that's been the trend each and every day go up a couple of degrees yesterday we were right around mid 80s mid upper 80s now upper 80s then we get kind of a, a, a check in those temperatures so it's going to hold it in in check tomorrow so it'll go down ever so slightly uh and so not quite as warm still another fantastic day the weekend Overall, wonderful. Not as cool in the mornings. Explain why coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Right now we're dealing with one accident. It's going to be westbound US Highway 90 at Military Drive. Uh, it's actually right here. This is military. It's probably in between right around here. It was reported just before. So somewhere in this area, not quite at 410 yet. Just keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction. All right, drive times. If you're eastbound 151, 1604 to 90, you got a 10 minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. So really Really good times there. All right, here we go. Trans guy time. Let's see what we're looking at here. This is US 90 at Callahan where that accident supposed to be somewhere in this area. Still flowing smoothly on those west and eastbound lanes. Got nothing to worry about there. It's not going to cause any traffic buildup. Max, Stephanie, back to you. All right, thank you so much. Late breaking news at this hour. Folks in the city's east side waking up to a shooting this morning. This is happening in the 500 block of Dory Street just east of I-10. Our Katrina Weber joins us now with more details. Good morning. Well, good morning. Apparently people have been awake for a while. The shooting happened about 2.30, but yet this is still an active crime scene here in the 500 block of Dory. Uh, we're still waiting for police to give us some details on what happened, but we have seen them in the driveway of this home. You can see them right there. They've been looking uh, in and around that car in the driveway, uh, and it appears they have some evidence markers on the ground as well. So that perhaps is where uh, the shooting happened in that driveway. But again, we don't know anything just yet. Uh, police are not giving out any details at this time. Uh, we know that at least the call was for a shooting with at least one victim. And uh, we are going to try to attempt to get them to uh, talk to us and tell us exactly what happened uh, so that we can bring that information uh, to you. But for now, they do have this uh, 500 block of Dory blocked off. This is just south of MLK near Booker T. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, flames ending in damage to a corner store just west of the downtown area. All this happening in the 2100 block of West Martin just before midnight. Fire investigators tell us that the owner of the store got an alarm about a fire, checked out the store. He didn't find anything. A few minutes later, though, heavy smoke could be seen coming from the building. 
Firefighters able to knock down the, fl the flames quickly, but not before it caused about $50,000 worth of damage. Investigators tell us the cause looks like it could be accidental. Luckily, though, no one was injured. Well, the dust has settled on the first presidential debate of the year, but for a lot of viewers, Tuesday night's presidential showdown will be remembered for the personal attacks and for the constant interruptions. And now the debate commission says it is considering making changes for the next two debates. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest from Washington. This morning, fallout from what's being called the worst debate in American history. The Radical question, left. Will you shut who is up, man? Listen, who President Trump up? called it fun. I thought the uh, debate last night was great. We've gotten tremendous reviews on it. But some lawmakers from both sides of the aisle say President Trump went too far with the insults and interruptions. Just don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Oh, give me a break. Now, both candidates hit the campaign trail running. Trump with a signature rally claiming victory. The verdict is in. All of us won big last night. Joe Biden kicking off a train tour in Cleveland, Ohio, calling Trump's performance a national embarrassment. We can't take four more years of this president. Then on to Pennsylvania, telling voters Trump is trying to distract from the coronavirus pandemic. He thinks that if he just yells louder and louder, throws out lie after lie after lie, he'll get his way. He thinks we'll forget. Meanwhile, the president is left trying to clean up this troubling debate moment where he did not outright condemn a white supremacist group when asked to do so. The problem well, with boys, stand back and stand by. The extremist group adopting that quote, stand back and stand by as a new slogan. White supremacists, they clearly love you and support you. I want law and order to be a very important part. It's a very important part of my campaign. But you denounced them. Do you denounce I've them? always denounced any form, any form, any form of any of that you have to denounce. And now the debate commission is planning changes at the next two debates, promising to use what it calls additional tools to maintain order. And while Trump touts the debate as a big win in his re-election bid, a Joe Biden campaign official tells ABC News they raised $21.5 million online Wednesday, their best day of the race so far. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. And closer to home, the Fifth Circuit of Appeals ruling straight ticket voting will not happen here in Texas. All of this comes after a district judge tried to bring back the practice by blocking a Republican measure. Straight ticket voting allows people to choose one party's entire slate of candidates based on the ballot instead of choosing each candidate individually. Bear County's election administrator Jackie Callanan says she will abide by whatever the courts decide. A new nonprofit is doing some mass COVID-19 testing at Somerset ISD. The district is receiving the testing service for free as part of a pilot program. That testing happens weekly and it's fast. The results are received in 24 hours and the goal is to get more students back into the classroom safely. Last week, more than 200 Somerset High School students and staff were tested for COVID-19. Now they hope to increase those tests to about 1,000. That nonprofit, Community Labs, developed the new program to help identify people who may be silently spreading that virus. The superintendent says they hope to provide the testing service at all campuses by the end of October. Time now, 5.08, 56 degrees out. And still had Google showing off their brand new smartphone. Whoa. We're going to take a look at the Pixel 5. And next, how a local organization making sure Latino youth have a voice beyond their high school education. We'll explain. And taking a look out with live cam, we are happy with this 56 degrees. Much better than the 80s, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. We're going to check it with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Thursday. The graduation rate for Hispanic students has steadily inclined and a USA Today report revealed that a record amount are now attending college. The National Hispanic Institute of San Antonio is one organization making sure Latino youth have a voice beyond their high school education and they're more successful in college. Eric Hernandez spoke with students who are part of the national program that's been around for 40 years. Over 50 high schools in San Antonio and the surrounding areas participate in the National Hispanic Institute of San Antonio. And it offers a place that is safe for students to really explore themselves, their identity, their communities, their culture, and be able to, to feel confident in who they are 
in articulating themselves and creating their voice. Engaging programs and competitions are offered within NHI to further educate Latino youth on how to become leaders. It's a really cool space where you get to explore more about your culture and find more about like the issues in your culture and figure out ways where you yourself can solve them. I think it's so much more than just speaking, but also learning and figuring out like how to voice your opinions and your ideas and becoming a better version of yourself and sharing that with the world. While former alumni of the organization have gone on to Ivy League colleges, owned businesses, be politicians, or become doctors, the students who are part of the program today are more focused on making a difference right now. Ultimately, the Latino youth is going to be the future, and we are and using NHI, we can build tools to learn how to solve problems on our own, have a voice to speak out our own opinion. I think it's also important to recognize that we are alive today and we can be the leaders of today. The National Hispanic Institute of San Antonio works with about 200 students a year, and right now they are recruiting. If you're interested, you could reach out to the organization or ask your school about it. For more about NHI, just go to the Hispanic Heritage Month section on KSAT.com. Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And time now, 513, 56 degrees out. And still ahead, take a look at this video. It's called Hell. <laughs> Hell is now listed as a destination on the popular vacation website, Airbnb. So a look at what you'll find if you plan on taking a trip there. I'm Erin. And I'm Margo. We've always done things our own way. Charted our own paths. I wasn't going to just back down from moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis wasn't going to change who I am. When I learned that my joint pain could mean permanent joint damage, I asked about Embril. Embril helps relieve joint pain and helps stop permanent joint damage. Plus, Embril helps skin get clearer in psoriatic arthritis. Ask your doctor about Embril so you can get back to your true self. Label! Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Visit Embril.com to see how your joint damage could progress. Embril. Eligible patients may pay as little as $5 per month. In today's Tech Bytes, a new laptop from Microsoft. Reports say the new Surface Laptop Go is being introduced today. The device is said to have a 12 and a half inch screen and a fingerprint reader and the power button. It's expected to cost around $750. Google has announced the long awaited launch of its newest smartphone. The company says the Pixel 5 features a six inch display with a stronger glass panel and water resistance. The Pixel 5 will start at $699 and will be available on October. October 29th. Hell is now listed on Airbnb. Hell, Michigan, that is. The tiny town's wedding chapel has been transformed into a spooky gothic lair that sleeps too just in time for Halloween. Visitors can book a one night stay for around 30 bucks. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. To be fair, it looks nice. Yeah. It does look nice. <laughs> and Mike was telling us it is a really nice place. Well, I've never, actually, I've never been. I've never been there. I've but gone, you said it was I've gone, nice. I've gone past it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. In passing. In, in Michigan. Up there, oh, yeah. There you go. All right. Speaking of passing people, how are the roadways looking out? Right now, Max, are looking good. Uh, dealing with another accident. So we've had a couple of minor accidents this morning. Nothing very, very major. This accident here is going to be eastbound or southbound. I would say southwest Loop 410 at Old Pearsall Road there at the turnaround. Uh, one vehicle accident. SAPD is on scene. Hopefully it gets cleared up very soon. All right. Taking a look at the trans guy right now. We've got 37 at Hackberry looking good. Traffic flowing very smoothly there. Not much going on. Uh, 10 and 35. Five looks great. 281 and bitters flowing smoothly. And let's do one more here. 37 and 410 looks good. So all around the city, things are looking really good. Just that one minor accident on Old Pearsall and 410. All right, thank as, you so as much. As I was telling you all, when I was in right. college. Are we are supposed to look at you? Or are we doing, are we <laughs> I know. Look at here? Are we looking here? I'm in the right place where if I go like this to look at uh -huh. you, it, it works well on the, uh, oh, the Brady Bunch shot there. But um, on the highway between the interstate between Detroit and going over to Kalamazoo when I was going to Western Michigan and there were the highway signs there, directional signs and you know, here's hell and 
I did not, <laughs> nor anybody that was, I was close to, but every once in a while in a dorm room, you'd see a highway sign that somebody had absconded. I with. can mm. see that happening a lot. Probably yes. a, you know, yeah. a big problem for that town. <laughs> <laughs> so they put extra special, like, tightened or bolts on the highway sign so people couldn't do that. So, How again, funny. never did it. Just making that clear. All right, uh, <laughs> beautiful shot, the sunset, and then there's the gorgeous moon because when it's full, just as the sun's going down west, the moon's coming up in the east, and boy, that's a pretty shot. And speaking of beautiful shot, okay, can you see it? It's right at the very top. There is the full moon today, technically full today. It's beautiful out there, and we're just going to continue to watch that thing as it sinks down on the western sky. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous as our temperatures. Now, yesterday we made it up to 87 degrees, uh, 89 Hondo, Kerrville, just a couple of 90s on the board yesterday. And today we're looking at temperatures to be a couple of notches warmer. That's been the, the kind of the trend each and every day. That will come to an end. We'll kind of drop back into the mid 80s the next couple of days. Uh, but as far as the span in temperatures, yesterday we started off at 51 degrees, got up to 87, so 36 degrees. Today we're starting off at 56, forecasting 89. So, you know, just about 35 degrees on average. And some areas will actually get warmer than that. We're right now we're down to 45 in Comfort and 46 up the road in Ball Verde. Then you go upstairs in the atmosphere and water vapor imagery, the kind of brownish tannish shade, that's just bone dryer where we had a couple of days ago. And this is still very dry when you have this very dark shade of gray upstairs in the atmosphere, which means not a lot of moisture aloft. And so again, we're gonna have those just intensely beautiful blue skies out there. Same configuration that we've had all week long. Big roller coaster. You get a high off to the west. You get a big trough uh, up around the Great Lakes, and that brings in this beautiful air. That's going to remain the case. Now, we do have some minor fluctuations. Low temperatures this morning, not as cold as yesterday, and so on and so forth going into the weekend. A little bit more humidity down here at the surface, but overall, this pattern is not changing all that much. Going into next week, uh, what we're hoping for, but it's not looking encouraging, was to see a little bit of a wave come in here from the uh, the Gulf of Mexico, but it looks like that high may be kind of dominating things and pushing that down to the south. That would be any sort of a rain chance by late next week, which is not looking good at all right now. 80 today at noon, sunny skies and then high temperature up to 89. Fantastic. Open up the windows. Enjoy it. Gorgeous sunset tonight. Enjoy that full moon. And tomorrow we start off 58 degrees, 60 then. Saturday morning, 62 Sunday morning. Really nice still, but just not as chilly and crisp. And a few more uh, morning clouds starting in the weekend, going into next week. And temperatures, you know, kind of fluctuate a little bit, but then we'll make it up to close to 90 by the middle of next week. I'm not a runner. I don't run, <laughs> but I know this is so yes, ideal. Yeah. This is great running weather. Beautiful. Can't complain. There you go. All right. <laughs> 50s, sunny. What else do we need? Exactly. <laughs> All right, 522, 56 degrees out. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at the Borat sequel and a new documentary on John Belushi. Good morning and welcome back. Happy Thursday today in entertainment news, a surprise sequel to a unique comedy and a new look at a fallen star. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. My name is Borat. I generally is for Kazakhstan. Borat is back. Sasha Baron Cohen has made a sequel to his 2006 satirical documentary, Borat, Cultural Learnings of America for Make Benefit Glorious Nation of Kazakhstan. Cohen and company reportedly made the sequel on the sly, just as coronavirus filming restrictions were eased. Cohen's latest adventures, Meeting Real People While in Disguise, is set to premiere on Amazon Prime in late October. They've all got their opinions, but then what do they know? John said to me, I want to be an actor and create. Here's your first look at the new documentary, Belushi. Award-winning filmmaker R.J. Cutler retells the tale of the late, great John Belushi with the help of previously unheard audio tapes featuring the legendary performer's family, friends, and collaborators. Belushi debuts November 22nd on Showtime.
Know That Voice, Andrea Bocelli, who performed from Milan for millions around the world at Easter, is coming out with more inspirational music. The iconic Italian tenor is joined on his new album, Believe, by opera singer Cecilia Bartoli and 27-time Grammy winner Alison Krauss. Believe is due out November 13th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. What are we thinking? Yeah. Okay. I think so. You can give it like a B. A B. <laughs> well, an A, you're usually like, I need to see that. Well, so that's we'll say true. B. Okay, okay. Right. 527, 56 degrees out. And still ahead in our next half hour, failure to make a last minute deal in Washington, D.C. is forcing the airline industry to lay off thousands of workers. Plus, we'll have an update on how close lawmakers are to reaching a deal for another stimulus deal. We'll have the updates. And also, Walmart's getting a major mm. makeover. We're going to tell you how the big box chain is trying to give you an easier shopping experience. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Thursday. 5.30 this morning. I like Thursday because it's like towards the end of the it's week. It's almost Friday. There you yeah. go. It's Friday <laughs> Eve. It's fantastic. It's 56 degrees. It is October. It's beautiful out there. And then also there was a beautiful moon last night as well, Mike. Yeah, it is the full moon. You know, we've been watching this the past couple of days. And uh, right now it is just behind the banner right there. But as you can see, the glow, it is big and bright, beautiful out there. The next full moon, of course, been saying this for the past uh, couple of weeks is going to be on the 31st. And so I love that being on Halloween, but also uh, it is going to be a blue moon. Oh, there we go. As we zoom back out, you can see there's the moon. A uh, great shot of that 56 degrees. They're talking about dew points at 44. So still really, really comfortable. You want to grab a jacket this morning and uh, you won't need it by this afternoon because it is going to get a little bit warmer later on this afternoon. So we're going to be up to 80 at noon. Huge jump in temperatures. You know, we'll gain uh, once again, like yesterday, about 35 in some areas, close to 40 degrees between the low and the high. Nothing but sunshine. We do have some subtle changes coming up as we head in toward the weekend. Not anything major. Still going to be really nice weather, just not quite as uh, chilly in the mornings. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis scurrying over to uh, the map there. Anything going on? Uh, not right now, Mike. Things are looking good. We got that one accident. We're working on. We're working on it, and it looks like it's going to get cleared up any second now. This is southbound Southwest Loop 410 at Old Pearsall Road, right there at the turnaround. Doesn't look like it's going to cause any traffic buildup, and it should be clear here very soon. All right, some more drive time. If you're going I-10 eastbound from FM 46 to 1604, you got a 40-minute ride. It's still green, so it's still really good time. And then you got if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604. So let's just say from the rim area to IH 35, you got a 13 minute ride. So still really good times if you're heading in that direction. 37 at 410 right now, still flowing smoothly, still looking good. All right, everyone, please remember, wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit and get to work safely. Max, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you so much. Late breaking news at this hour. We want to get you back to that update on the shooting that happened on the city's east side early this morning. This is happening in the 500 block of Dory Street, just east of I-10. Our Katrina Weber joins us live now with more details. Well, good morning. We have been able to talk to a detective here. He confirmed that this is a fatal shooting. A 36-year-old man who was shot and killed uh, apparently outside this home. This is where investigators have been since about 2.30 this morning when they got the call. Uh, they say that there was apparently a disturbance inside the house. It spilled out onto the street. And then the 36-year-old man was shot in his head. Uh, he was taken to a hospital where he died. The police right now have about six people in custody. They say who they are talking to some as possible suspects in this. They did find one gun here at the scene, but they found evidence that there was more than one weapon involved. And so uh, they've been very thorough in going uh, all around this property looking for evidence. We see some evidence markers there in the driveway. That's where the man was shot. Uh, again, they don't know exactly what uh, led to this, but there was some kind of a disturbance that turned especially violent here this morning. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Parts of the travel industry feeling the effects of the economy that's been hit hard by COVID. That includes airlines, and as CNN's John Lawrence reports, officials there say furloughs and layoffs are likely unless they get more support from the government. House Democrats' $2.2 trillion stimulus relief package 
is expected to come to a vote Thursday. I'm hopeful. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi spent Wednesday afternoon negotiating with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. We'll just see what they come back with today and how our negotiations go next. After leaving Pelosi's office, Secretary Mnuchin said progress was made, but they still don't have an agreement. Sources say Pelosi and Mnuchin are far apart on a deal. We understand uh, that it's important to proceed in a way that results in both meaningful relief for the American people. The bill will then head to the GOP-controlled Senate, where it's already facing opposition. The latest bill from the Speaker <clears throat> is no more serious than any of their political stunts going back months. But as negotiations on Capitol Hill continue, the pandemic affecting Americans and even sports. The NFL is postponing Sunday's game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Tennessee Titans after Titans players and staff tested positive for coronavirus. It's not an ideal situation, but like I said, this is the, the hand that we're dealt. The league warning coaches there will be consequences if face coverings are not worn on the sidelines. Nobody's to blame. You know, it's, we're in a pandemic. Unfortunately, things happen. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. A request delayed in the Breonna Taylor case, the release of secret grand jury proceedings is now set to be made public tomorrow. Taylor was killed while sleeping in her bed after police fired into her home while executing a warrant. The grand jury decided not to charge any of the officers involved with her death. One officer was accused of shooting into a neighboring home. Taylor's family called for the grand jury transcript to be made public. A judge says the AG's office has until noon Friday to make the records available. NASA says it does more than boost astronauts into space. It's also a big boost for the United States economy. The space agency releasing the results of its first ever agency-wide economic impact report Last week, according to the report, NASA generating more than $64 billion in total economic output last year. They also say the agency has supported more than 312,000 American jobs. NASA states that every state in the United States has benefited because of the missions and because of their initiatives. And it's not just helping with dollars and jobs. NASA says its laboratory developed a ventilator specifically for COVID patients and made the design available to select manufacturers for free. JetBlue is not waiting for the holidays to deliver some holiday cheer to its customers. The airline launched a Be an Early Holiday-er this week. The discounts include a $50 off per person on holiday flights and $300 off per flight and hotel package. You can find the deal when you book a flight through JetBlue Vacations. These are flights booked for November 19th all the way through January 5th. All right, time now, 537, 56 degrees out. And still ahead, a look at how Walmart is changing their stores to making shopping a little more fun and convenient. Hmm. And let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 56 degrees to start your Thursday morning. Yesterday was 53, but who's counting? Thing is, we could have a good day for car washes, a great day to wear layers. Mike's going to be in with their full forecast. And welcome back. It's 541. In your morning consumer headlines, Walmart is getting a makeover. The retail giant is redesigning its stores to work more closely with the Walmart app. So the stores are getting organized and new large signage is being installed everywhere. It's all a push to get people to download and use the Walmart app while shopping in its stores. The app is designed to help shoppers navigate the aisles, search for products, and even check out and pay without having to interact with any employees. The redesign will roll out to 200 U.S. stores by the end of the year and a thousand more by the end of 2021. And in your car news, BMW out with a new soft top convertible, the BMW 4 Series convertible. The automaker says they designed the new car to have, quote, carefully judged enhancement of sporting abilities. The base price, just $53,000, expected to be available in March of next year. And IKEA is doing away with non-rechargeable batteries by October of 2021. IKEA says it wants to inspire more people to switch to rechargeable to reduce waste and save money. The retailer estimates that if all customers switched from alkaline batteries to rechargeable batteries and charged them 50 times, global waste could be reduced by as much as 5 
thousand tons every year. So IKEA, however, will return will continue to sell the lithium ion button cell battery since some products require them. Hmm. That is interesting. So going back to the Walmart thing, uh -huh. what if you like interacting with people? Hmm? I said, what if you like oh. interact? Because the whole point you is can, so you can like use the app and you right. don't have to talk to people. I understand we're in COVID years. Right. But you can still talk like from a the, distance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I still like to talk to people <laughs> and like, you know what, BMW, maybe lower the price a little bit. Well, to say. good take on that one. There you go. Yeah. All right, 542, 56 degrees out. And there's a lot of inaccurate misinformation floating around the coronavirus. Up next, we're going to check out the five top myths about COVID-19 and tell you what you need to know about them. And since the coronavirus pandemic first started, our understanding of what it is, how it infects people, and who it infects has evolved. That's right. But that evolution and the changing information has also shown a lot of confusion. So this morning, we're talking about some common misconceptions about the virus. According to the World Health Organization, inaccurate information about COVID-19 has led to many problems. Misconception number one, only older people are impacted by the virus. While older people are much more likely to get very sick with COVID-19 or die if they're infected, younger people are by no means immune. Misconception number two, masks don't protect you. Some studies have found that masks can reduce the amount of droplets that a person breathes into the air by up to 90%. But not all masks are created equal, so choose wisely. Misconception number three, you can only catch COVID-19 if you've been in close contact with someone who has symptoms. The virus is not only spread through touch or respiratory droplets, but through aerosols, which can linger in the air for hours. Misconception number four, Everyone can get a vaccine this winter. There's been a lot of speculation around when we will have a vaccine, but Dr. Anthony Fauci and other public health leaders have said that it is highly unlikely a vaccine will be available by Election Day. And things have changed, definitely. Absolutely. All right, time now, 547, 56 degrees out. Let's go ahead and check in with Nick Solis. How are the roads looking now? Right now, things are looking good. A uh, lot of green on the screen there as we speak. Uh, no accidents to report. Now, we did start with a couple of minor accidents this morning, but now things are really clearing up all around the city, which is good. Let's, let's take a look outside of the Trans Guide. Okay, so this is I-10 at Dominion. Usually we have construction here this early, but right now things are flowing smoothly east and westbound lanes. So if you're coming from 1604 to Bernie, looking good, and Bernie back to 1604, you're looking even better. So uh, expect a smooth ride if you're going out there. You got time to put some gas, get a taco or a tamale. All right. And That's good people, news. I was going to say, if people <laughs> are out, always good. Good start yeah. for the breakfast. Yes, of course. Um, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> I like that picture. I was working on some graphics. Yeah, if this is not a classic Halloween picture, I don't know what is. The full moon right between all those branches and maybe that's even the grass, but what a cool, cool picture. Love Thank it. you very much for that. Speaking of cool pictures, there is our beautiful full moon as it continues to uh, sink in the western sky. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it is. It, it's gorgeous out there. All right. Here's what the uh, dew point temperatures are looking like. The measure of moisture in the atmosphere. And this has really been one of the, the main factors that has have allowed temperatures to get so cool because the moisture, or excuse me, the dry air doesn't hold temperatures in like moist air does. Also, you can't drop down below the dew point temperature. So if you have dew points a little higher, you can't get that much colder. But with the dry air, you can really cool down quite easily, plus clear skies and light wind, radiational cooling as we talk about it. So throughout the rest of today, we are going to continue to see these dew points right around, say, um, low 40s, maybe a couple of 50s off to the east. Still very comfortable, although going back even a couple of days, dew points this morning are up considerably. We were down in the 20s and 30s, now it's 40s, and then over the next few days, we are going to see dew points tend to creep up just a little bit more. So the rule about not being able to drop down below the dew points, that means we're going to have low temperatures that are going to be staying right around 60, low 60s over the weekend. Still comfortable, but it won't just be as crisp as what it is right now. Then we'll get to sort of a bit of a reinforcing shot of some of that drier air coming in here by uh, about Monday, Tuesday. Now, as far as temperatures, we're not going to see anything just off the charts. Um, it, 
despite the low temperatures that are going to be back up closer to normal readings, high temperatures are still going to be held in check. We are going to make it up into the upper 80s today and then drop down just a couple of degrees going into tomorrow. And as far as anything uh, precipitation wise, well, just looking at that picture, uh, there's nothing out there. There's nothing off to the west of us whatsoever. And temperatures around the rest of the country, we have, again 56 degrees as of right now. We got some colder air coming in here in the uh, Great Lakes and northern Minnesota up there around the U.S. Canadian border. But the way this is configured, that colder air is definitely going to be staying up there to the north. This is kind of the dividing line right here. This would be considered the main flow of the jet stream. So this northwesterly flow, though, is keeping us really nice and going to continue to keep us nice. But again, the downside is it's going to continue to keep us not a drop of rain around here. 80 at noon, sunny skies, high temperature today up to 89, which is just a couple of degrees above normal. Then we get into tomorrow and sort of a kind of keeping tabs on temperatures. We get a little bit of a check of those temperatures staying in the mid 80s. We'll warm up again going in toward Monday and then yeah, we're making it in toward the upper 80s, 90 by the middle of next week. I see 90 there on Wednesday, but still not too bad. Not too bad, though, no, overall. No. Mm -hmm. I like the heat. You do? <laughs> she hates the heat. No, I, I like it cooler. No. Yeah, me too. I'm if I get right. 90 and sunny, is so <laughs> ideal. I like the 50s to wake up to that crisp smell, but like 90 and sunny, I'm in. It's relaxing. Well, I'll, I'll take about 70. Fair. Yeah. That's or the even, in you. you know, low You're 80. Pennsylvania. <laughs> I know, and I've learned to hate the cold. <laughs> Thank I'm you. from here, and I love the cold. <laughs> Time now, 551, 56 degrees. And that's what makes one. Yes, coming up next, a new sci-fi flick pits a pair of millennials against an alien invasion. Oh. Hmm, of what can only be described as oversized balls of fur. Okay, we'll take a look next. Hmm. All right, taking a look at those louder numbers. Pick three, zero, two, zero, fireball three, daily four, eight, one, nine, nine, fireball two. Cash five, one, two, 25, 28, 34. And Lotto Texas, four, 11, 16, 19, 27, 30. And your Powerball, 14, 18, 36, 49, 67, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. And going back to that Lotto, Texas, oh, we yeah. believe that someone in Seguin actually won, I think, about $47 million. Not bad. Congrats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our producer Hardy says yes. Confirmed. 40 says so. Congratulations. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Keep the job. <laughs> Play it out. Good advice, Max. Coming up here on a Thursday edition of GMA, we start with the fallout after that presidential debate. The Commission on Presidential Debates is promising new rules to avoid a repeat of Tuesday night. This is all happening as prominent Republicans are distancing themselves from President Trump's comments after the president still refused to denounce white supremacists. We're going to have more on all the fallout coming up this morning right here on GMA. Hello, this is Jack. And Sue. And we are going offline for one whole week, mm -hmm. but we will be back June 9th. So if you need us, um, too bad. It's millennials versus aliens in Save Yourselves. No laptops, no phones, no connecting to anything. These two pure of heart but naive Brooklynites decide to go offline and disconnect to find themselves and better themselves as people. But in the process of doing so, they find something much more sinister. What is that? Has this been here the whole time? The poof? I don't know. Probably. Oh my god. They are self-aware in like a damaging way. <laughs> Where they're really, they're really trying, but they're also really unaware. But we tried to make fun of them in a loving way, um, yeah. you know, in that you wouldn't really hate them and, and want to turn off the, the movie, you know, in the first five minutes because you're going to be with them the whole time. And some of our favorite movies are, you know, Coen Brothers movies or, or movies about dopey characters and you just laugh at them like really trying their best. Hi world! Saving myself in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And a reminder, if you haven't registered to vote, the clock is ticking. The deadline to register is Monday, October 5th. Early voting runs Monday, October 13th through Friday, October 30th. The general election is Tuesday, November 3rd. 
find out how to register or check your status right now on our website. Just head to ksat.com. You can also take a look at who is on the ballot in Bear County. It's all in the vote section under the news tab. And that's all for now. We have a lot more coming up right after the break, including staying indoors that helps prevent COVID. But it can also take a toll on your physical health. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to run down some of the best ways to stay fit during this pandemic. And we're going to take a live look out at the roadways. Looks calm out there right now. 281 at Bitters, if anything does pop up. Officer Solis is in here with your full update. Right now, San Antonio police on the scene of a shooting at a Southside motel. We're going to have the latest on the investigation and the incident that left one person dead. And coming up, more fallout from what's being called the worst debate in U.S. history. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. And yay! Taking a look out with live cam, beautiful moon, beautiful weather, 55 degrees. We are very happy today on October 1st. <laughs> Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Thursday. It is October 1st. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. You love October. You want to show off the earrings? Oh, yeah. Those are my little ghost earrings to celebrate all month long. I love Halloween. And your daughter's birthday. My daughter's birthday, birthday is coming up. Love there October. And the weather, of course. And the weather. Started off 55 degrees, a little warmer than yesterday, though. Well, only by a handful of degrees. You know, we did drop down to uh, 51 yesterday. Whoa. Yeah, and uh, we've got the full moon, new month, beautiful weather. Can't beat that. And once again, the uh, beautiful picture of the moon as it continues to drop in the sky, in the western sky right there. Yeah, it is just gorgeous outside again this morning and once again this morning you want to grab a jacket especially in the hill country mid 40s out there 45 Balverde, 55 Castroville and 55 here at the uh, airport and well um, you know there could fluctuate a degree or two but right around seven o'clock 55 degrees here in town so I think temperatures will stay uh, within range of a degree or two where they are as of right now and then we're really going to warm up quickly once that sun gets higher in the sky throughout the morning hours you can probably watch the thermometer go up when Make it up to 80 already at noon and then continue up into the upper 80s. So like yesterday, we're going to be gaining about 35 degrees on average. Some areas are going to be gaining about 40 degrees throughout the course of the day. We do have some subtle changes coming up this weekend. Still going to be fantastic weather, just not as cool in the mornings and maybe a couple of clouds out there. Get all the details sorted out in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. Looking at the map, looks free and clear. Is that the case? Oh, yeah, it's a big map of a lot of green there, Mike. So okay. smooth sailing right now. If you are headed to work, things are looking good. No accidents to report, no construction, no heavy pockets of traffic either. Look at these drive times right now. You're about to be. Oh, I thought I had some drive time for you. I'm sorry about that. I guess we're going straight to uh, Trans Guide where we have 10 in Dominion, east and westbound flowing smoothly, but all around the city is flowing smoothly. Just remember everyone, please, uh, there's 37 Indian Hills, that's looking good too. Just wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit, and get to work safely. Max, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you so much. San Antonio police investigating what appears to be a murder on the city's east side. A man who was shot at a home in the 500 block of Dory has died. Our Katrina Weber is live at the scene with a report. Now, do police know who shot him? Well, that's one of the things that homicide investigators are trying to sort out. They told me they have six people in custody who they are talking to this morning, uh, some of who may be, they tell me. Now, they've been very careful not to miss a thing. They've been out here since 2.30 this morning. We still have crime scene investigators uh, going over the, the area in the front of the house here in the 500 block of Dory. Uh, just a little while ago, they picked up a gun that was there next to a pool of blood. Police tell me that is where the man, the 36 year old man was shot in his head. It started out as some sort of dispute inside the house, spilled out outside. The man was shot there. Uh, he was taken to a hospital where he died. And police say they have evidence, although they picked up one gun, they have evidence that there were several weapons involved. And uh, again, they are talking to a group of people who was here at the house and trying to sort it all out, but they do believe that they may have a suspect among them. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Katrina. Developing now, police are trying to figure out what led up to a deadly shooting at a motel on the south side. Now, this is a live look at the scene right now. Police say it started at the Everclean Motel in the 1300 block of Roosevelt Avenue. They say one man walked into a room at that motel where seven other men were waiting. Police do not know why he went into the room at this time, but say at one point all of them started shooting at each other. The man who initially walked into that room ran across the street to the Shell gas station, but a bullet hit him in the hip. He is now recovering at Bamsey. Meanwhile, one of the men in the room was shot in the chest and was dropped off at a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Another man in the room was dropped off at University Hospital with a gunshot wound to his hand. And a store owner now needs to fix significant damage after an overnight fire. Firefighters on the scene tell us the owner of the corner store at Martin and San Jacinto on the west side locked up at around 11 last night, but just a half hour later, he got an alert for a fire. Firefighters on the scene tell us the owner checked out the store, didn't see anything at first, then he found heavy smoke coming from the building. Arson investigators looking into the cause of the fire. No injuries reported, but we are told there could be about $50,000 in damages. San Antonio police say a five vehicle crash caused a shutdown on Highway 281 late last night. Police say a driver rear ended another car head on in the southbound lanes of 281 between Thousand Oaks and Brook Hollow. Two drivers were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The driver who caused the crash is now in police custody facing charges of DWI. And a new nonprofit doing mass COVID-19 testing at a local school district. Somerset ISD receiving the testing service for free. It's all part of a new pilot program. The testing happens weekly and the results come back in just 24 hours. The goal here, get more students back in the classroom and do it safely. The nonprofit called Community Labs developed the new program to help identify people who may be silently spreading COVID. Speed is everything on testing. If you don't get a result quickly, it's almost worthless. So that's why we created a lab to be able to have enough capacity and speed that we could really send kids back to school. The superintendent of Somerset ISD says they hope to provide the testing service at all of their campuses by the end of October. Local health officials are reporting 155 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. They are also reporting one more person has died from the virus. Our seven day moving average is now at 178 cases per day. Right now, 212 patients are hospitalized, 81 are in the ICU and 30 are on ventilators. And after a new judgment, you will now not be able to vote straight ticket in the November election here in Texas. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals made the decision just yesterday. All of this comes after a district judge tried to bring back the practice by blocking a Republican measure. Straight ticket voting allows people to choose one party's entire slate of candidates on the ballot instead of choosing candidates individually. Now, Bexar County Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says she would abide by any decision that the courts make. And the Commission on Presidential Debates say they are making changes for the next two debates after the dust settles from the chaotic debate on Tuesday. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump trying to clear up some of the remarks that he made in that debate when he failed to denounce white supremacist groups in the United States. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. And good morning. It is back to the races for both of these candidates and President Trump quick to tell his supporters that he was victorious in this debate while Joe Biden says that Trump's demeanor on stage was an embarrassment. This morning, fallout from what's being called the worst debate in American history. The Radical question, left. Will you shut up, your, man? Listen. President Trump called it fun. I thought the uh, debate last night was great. We've gotten tremendous reviews on it. But some lawmakers from both sides of the aisle say President Trump went too far with the insults and interruptions. Just don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Oh, give me a break. Now, both candidates hit the campaign trail running. Trump with a signature rally claiming victory. The verdict is in. All of us won big last night. Joe Biden kicking off a train tour in Cleveland, Ohio, calling Trump's performance a national embarrassment. We can't take four more years of this president. Then on to Pennsylvania, telling voters Trump is trying to distract from the coronavirus pandemic. He thinks that if he just yells louder and louder, throws out lie after lie after lie, he'll get his way. He thinks we'll forget. 
And now the debate commission is planning changes at the next two debates, promising to use what it calls additional tools to maintain order. And while Trump touts the debate as a big win in his re-election bid, a Joe Biden campaign official tells ABC News they raised $21.5 million online Wednesday, their best day of the race so far. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. President Donald Trump has signed a bill to fund the government through December 11th, avoiding a government shutdown that would have started today. The U.S. Senate and House of Representatives each passed the bill with bipartisan support. And remember, the deadline to register to vote in Texas is quickly approaching. You do have until October 5th to register in order to be able to vote in the November election. That is this upcoming Monday. You can find resources on how to register right now. Just head to ksat.com's Vote 2020 page. And remember, early voting begins October 13th. Coming Time now. What would you say? Is it coming up quick? Very much so. Yes. Time now, 610, 55 degrees now. And a town with a peculiar name is trying mm. to attract autumn visitors. We're going to see how a place in Michigan is offering a heavenly vacation in a place you wouldn't expect. Mike may or may not have stolen signs from that town. No. A National Hispanic <laughs> Institute of San Antonio is one organization making sure Latino youth have a voice beyond their high school education and make sure they're successful in college. We're going to explain how they do it right after the break. No, Mike didn't take any signs, but we'll have that story coming up soon. Taking a look at the live can camp. Confirm or deny. <laughs> it is 55 degrees. We are enjoying the temperatures. Hope you are too. But you want to, want to grab a light sweater or a jacket for just this morning. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. Good morning and welcome back. The graduation rate for Hispanic students has climbed steadily and a new USA Today report reveals that a record amount of Hispanics are attending college. The National Hispanic Institute of San Antonio is one organization making sure Latino youth have a voice beyond their high school education and that they're successful in college. Our Eric Hernandez spoke with students, a part of the national program that has been around for over 40 years. Over 50 high schools in San Antonio and the surrounding areas participate in the National Hispanic Institute of San Antonio. And it offers a place that is safe for students to really explore themselves, their identity, their communities, their culture, and be able to, to feel confident in who they are in articulating themselves and creating their voice. Engaging programs and competitions are offered within NHI to further educate Latino youth on how to become leaders. It's a really cool space where you get to explore more about your culture and find more about like the issues in your culture and figure out ways where you yourself can solve them. I think it's so much more than just speaking, but also learning and figuring out like how to voice your opinions and your ideas and becoming a better version of yourself and sharing that with the world. While former alumni of the organization have gone on to Ivy League colleges, owned businesses, be politicians, or become doctors, the students who are part of the program today are more focused on making a difference right now. Ultimately, the Latino youth is going to be the future and we are and using NHI, we can build tools to learn how to solve problems on our own, have a voice to speak out our own opinion. I think it's also important to recognize that we are alive today and we can be the leaders of today. The National Hispanic Institute of San Antonio works with about 200 students a year, and right now they are recruiting. If you're interested, you could reach out to the organization or ask your school about it. For more about NHI, just go to the Hispanic Heritage Month section on ksat.com. Eric Hernandez, case at 12 News. All right. Well, our own officer, Nick Solis, started singing, so that means it must look good out there on the roadways. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> it looks great right now, uh, for sure. A lot of green on the screen. Now I have drive times up. Let's see. Here we go. If you're on I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, you got a 12-minute commute. And if you're on I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 12 minutes. Looking good there on the northwest side of the city to 35, both directions. All right, trans guide time. This is 1604 at Hausman right now. That's flowing smoothly both north and southbound there. Now we got 35 in Shirts Parkway up there in north near Shirt Cibolo area. That looks great. And 37 at 410 flowing smooth as well. 35 at Thousand Oaks looking even better.
to say, Mom, you have time to grab a taco before you there go to work. There you go. <laughs> she does. All green on the screen. People heading to the cars, though, might want to put on that heat. Yeah, a uh, little bit of a jacket as well, too, but you won't need it this afternoon, just like the past couple of days, and that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. Huge warm-up throughout the day. We're going to be gaining about 35 degrees across the board. So we're starting off this morning right around mid-50s, and then we top off 89 later on today. That means there will be some uh, low 90s over in toward the, the Rio Grande Valley. Take a look at this picture. What a beautiful, beautiful sight up there along the Guadalupe in Kerrville. Just fantastic. Nice and peaceful and tranquil. Wouldn't it be nice to just stand out there and do nothing? Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Live cam, gorgeous shot of the moon. It's continuing to drop down in the western sky. Going to be uh, setting shortly. And then, of course, later on this afternoon or this evening, just as the sun is going down, off to the west. Moon's going to be coming up off to the east, so uh, take a look at that. And uh, yes, this is the uh, full moon. It is called the Hunter's Moon. This is when this is back based on uh, lore from the Algonquin Indians up there around the Great Lakes area and everything. Uh, they call it the Hunter's Moon when they begin to uh, the the livestock or the um, game would start to fatten up for the winter months and uh, folks would be storing up food for the upcoming winter. This one is also called the harvest moon. Now, a lot of times people think it's just the September full moon, but it's the moon, the full moon that's closest to the autumnal equinox, which was back on the 22nd. The September full moon was back on the, the 2nd of September. So this is also the harvest moon. And then we've got a blue moon coming up this month on the 31st. That's the second full moon of the calendar month. So dew point temperature Measure moisture in the atmosphere. Really, really nice. Step outside. You, you can feel how nice it is. There's been a slight increase. Uh, dew points have gone up a handful of degrees in the past 24 hours, but that's the trend. And it'll go up a little bit more tomorrow, and then especially dew points will be going up in toward the weekend. So that's going to hold temperatures up because you can't drop down. Temperatures can't drop down below what the dew point temperature is. Now, as far as any rain, and yeah, even though the month of September we ended up right where we should be, just a tad over three inches of rain, we haven't had any rain since back right around the 21st, 22nd of September, and there's nothing in the forecast. And this is what's upstream. Just look off to the west, and that's what's in store for us right now. Cold temperatures, obviously in the higher elevations, uh, the Rocky Mountains, Casper, Wyoming's at 29 degrees right now, and then there is some colder air obviously developing and kind of brewing up there in Canada, but that's all going to be staying up there to the north because this batch of cold air, this low up here is going to be staying further to the north. We still have this northwesterly airflow in the atmosphere and that's going to continue to give us some gorgeous weather. Also, even though temperatures will warm up into the upper 80s today and that's been the trend to go a couple of more degrees, then we get kind of a lid on that over the next couple of days. So that'll knock us back down. And then we do another warm up going into next week. And with that high pretty much dominating things, that's keeping any rain chances at bay. Down here in the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, there is a low, kind of this easterly wave as we call it, that's gonna try and work in here. But this is late next week. Unfortunately, yesterday it looked a little bit better for rain chances next week, but it looks like that high may kind of kind of hold fast and push that thing down to the south of us so it would kind of push any rain chances out of the way as well. 80 today at noon. Sunny skies, just a fantastic day. Make sure you open up the windows and then 89 for a high temperature. Nice and warm, still pleasant with the, the humidity. Tomorrow, a little more humidity means just a little bit warmer and they get high temperatures are not going to be as warm. Tomorrow, 85 degrees. We'll have some morning clouds around here over the weekend temperatures in the low 60s and it's getting a bit warmer by the middle of next week. Still nice considering yeah, what yeah. we're used to. <laughs> I'll favorite, take it. Favorite month? Yes, favorite month of all time. October. There you go. Just <laughs> fall in general. Yeah, we love it. More yeah. of a summer guy. I like the summer. I'm not trying to be contrarian here. I just like the heat. Anyway, <laughs> could you two trade places? <laughs> 621, 55 degrees out. No fans here. Oh, look, you're a fan of murder hornets. Oh, yeah, there we all. <laughs> so there are new concerns about these murder hornets after three new sightings of the invasive insect. We're going to learn more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K. That's what you get. A monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA.
Chances are you have some questions right now. Here are a couple answers. Lysol disinfectant spray and Lysol disinfecting wipes together can be used on over 100 surfaces and kill up to 99.9% .9 of germs. Lysol, what it takes to protect. Hey there, Robert Larson here. You know, with Simply Safe, you get comprehensive, professionally monitored home security without having to leave your house or have anyone to come install it. You simply order it online, it gets delivered to your door, and you can set it up yourself in just a few minutes. Imagine that. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect your home, your family, and anything else you need to keep a close eye on. Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows. So Dad bought Puffs Plus Lotion and rescued his nose. Puffs have more lotion and soothing softness to relieve. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. In this morning's GMA First Look, three new sightings of that rare, deadly insect known as the murder hornet, raising new concerns. It is confirmation that the, the hornet has spread. And it is a question of, well, is that the only location or are there some other locations as well? We just do not know. The new discoveries coming just as one study warns the invasive species has the potential to spread rapidly throughout parts of the Pacific Northwest if it's not wiped out soon. The reason that people are so frightened by this is because it's unfamiliar to them. They may be unfamiliar here in the U.S., but giant hornets have a dangerous reputation elsewhere. Native to Asia, they were first spotted in Washington state late last year. Since then, 12 sightings in that same coastal area. So is it too late to stop the spread? We'll tell you what the experts are saying coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. And firefighters in Washington getting a helping hand from space. SpaceX has loaned first responders terminals that let them access its Starlink satellites. This gives them internet service in an area near Spokane where fires destroyed a lot of the telecommunication infrastructure. Firefighters say they are using the service to organize their activities and request additional help. All right, so you can now vacation in hell. Well, hell, Michigan, that is. The tiny town's <laughs> wedding chapel has been transformed into a spooky gothic lair that sleeps too, just mm. in time for Halloween. And you can book it on Airbnb for about 30 bucks a night. Wow. Just be sure to get the weather report there. You could end up in hell. <laughs> as it freezes over. <laughs> you had a lot of fun with this one? <laughs> yeah, I did. Our producer, Jared, I have to give him credit. He wrote this. Yeah, he's yeah. from Michigan, so I'm sure that he's come across this story a couple times. Yes, and Mike is familiar mm -hmm. with the city as well. I wonder if there's the highway to hell. But um, shoot, nothing, nothing there, <laughs> nothing, Mike. Give me a smirk a little bit. It's just a two-lane road, not a highway. Okay, it's a two, whatever. A I'm two like, lane. Oh, says, <laughs> just so. a two-lane road. <laughs> 620s. I'm over here trying. 627, <laughs> 55 degrees out. And police are still trying to find out what led to that deadly shooting at a Southside motel. We're going to get the latest in our next half hour. Police are still trying to figure out what caused a shooting at a Southside motel. We're going to get the latest in just a few minutes. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, look at that full moon, October 1st, 55 degrees, a lot to be happy about. What does the rest of the day look like? What does the rest of the week look like? Mike joins us in just a few moments with your full forecast. Good morning. It is Thursday, October 1st. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Yes, thanks for joining us. There is a lot to be happy about. Uh, it's October. Mm -hmm. The weather's great. You have the coolest earrings. Oh, thank you. My Halloween earrings. And it's happy Thursday. Happy almost Friday. Thursday. Friday Eve. Mm -hmm. A cool 55. Mike? Fantastic. Yeah, great in the afternoon. Yesterday we gained about 35 degrees between the low and the high. We're going to be doing that again today. So it will be uh, kind of warm this afternoon, but we'll still have some wonderful humidity. humidity is definitely on the low side and yeah that full moon is just spectacular it's obviously sinking in the western sky but uh, as the sun goes down tonight just look off to the east and the moon's going to be rising as well 
55 as I mentioned right now, dew points at 44, still very dry air. Anytime we're well below 60, it's really comfortable out there. Wind uh, for the time being is out of the uh, west to northwest and temperatures around the area. 45 Bernie stage 44 comfort and Valverde. We are up just a couple of notches compared to yesterday. Yesterday started off at 51 degrees, um, but still, yeah, jacket weather. Grab one throughout the rest of today or th the rest of the morning, pardon me, but you won't need it later on this afternoon. Clear, cool, just wonderful this morning. Sunny, we're going to be in the upper 80s and even some low 90s later on today, especially off to the west toward the uh, Rio Grande Valley. And then tomorrow, cool, sunny, not quite as warm. We will, it, it won't be as cold in the morning, and then we will stay about mid 80s tomorrow. So it's kind of holding the high temperatures in check. We've got some subtle changes coming on in here for the weekend. Still fantastic weather. We'll explain that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and one of the wonderful gentlemen in blue. Officer Nick Solis, what's going on? Thanks, Mike, for that. All right, so right now, 3735 may have a possible accident there. Don't have any details in this right now, other than that there, there is an accident. Maybe in that area, don't know if it's north or southbound. Just keep that in mind. If you are headed downtown right now, you could run into this accident on 37 and 35. All right, drive times. Here we go. You got eastbound 151, 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound to 1604 to IH35, 11 minutes. Things are looking good there. All right, trans guide time. Here we go. 35 in Church Parkway. Traffic definitely going from light to moderate now, especially in the southbound lanes here. Those southbound lanes always get a little more clogged up in the morning and then northbound in the afternoon. Afternoon. So uh, expect a delay if you're coming from shirts to 235, 1604 area uh, where we have some moderate traffic. Max, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police questioning about a half a dozen people in connection with a deadly shooting on the city's east side. Police tell us someone shot a man overnight in the driveway of a home in the 500 block of Dory. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, you say this started with an argument inside the home? Well, that's what police tell us. There was some sort of a disturbance at this house. Things spilled out into the driveway, and that is where the man was shot in his head. A 36-year-old man who uh, was taken to the hospital where he died. The police have spent a whole lot of time uh, collecting evidence here. We have some video to show you as well. They've been sorting through this uh, front yard area, going through with a fine-tooth comb. In fact, we saw them pick up a gun at one point and take that in as evidence. Uh, they tell us, though, that they did find evidence that there was more than one weapon involved. Police took about six people into custody for questioning. They told us that they thought perhaps it, at least one of them might be the suspect. A little while ago, though, we saw them bring some of those people back, and they went back inside the house. Uh, police are still trying to get all the details to figure out what happened, um, and they still have not released the name of the man who was killed, but they do say he was 36 years old. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, case at 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Police still trying to piece together what led up to a deadly shooting at a Southside motel. Police say it all started at the Everclean Motel in the 1300 block of Roosevelt Avenue. Police on the scene telling us one man walked into a room in the motel. Seven other men were there waiting for him. Police do not know why he went to that room at this time, but they do say that at one point all of them started shooting at each other. The man who initially walked into the room then ran across the street to the gas, the gas station with a bullet in his hip. He is now at BAMC recovering. Meanwhile, one of the men in the room was shot in the chest, dropped off at a local hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Another man in the room dropped off at University Hospital with a gun wound, a gunshot wound to his hand. According to a new Bear Facts case at San Antonio report poll released this week, roughly three out of four Bear County parents say distance learning has improved since the first attempt last spring. According to the Bear Facts poll, 72% of respondents think school districts are doing either a much better or somewhat better job during this round of virtual learning. The Bear Facts poll found 63% of respondents also believe school districts have done a good job ensuring that students have equal access to the internet. Other findings in the Bearfax poll showed 75% of families feel well prepared to support children in distance learning, with 39% of respondents feeling like their child has fallen behind academically within the past five months. 
And the head of the Federal Aviation Administration got into the cockpit to test changes made to the Boeing 737 MAX. Federal regulators are evaluating proposed safety changes to the aircraft. The planes have been grounded worldwide since March of 2019 after a pair of deadly crashes killed 346 people. The 18-month grounding has cost Boeing at least $18 billion and has missed a series of target dates for getting approval for the plane to again carry passengers. And JetBlue offering holiday deals to anyone who plans their trip early this year. The airline launched a Be an Early Holidayer discount this week. You can get $50 off per person on holiday flights and $300 off a flight and hotel package. The discount applies to all trips from November 19th to January 5th. The CDC is extending a no-sail order for cruise ships through the end of October. This includes any ship with a capacity to carry at least 250 passengers in U.S. waters. The previous order expired yesterday. The CDC says since March 1st, there have been more than 3,600 reported cases of COVID-19 or COVID-like illnesses on cruise ships in U.S. waters. A federal health official says the CDC wanted to extend the order into next year, but the White House denied it. And a judge has approved an $800 million class action settlement in the Las Vegas mass shooting. Now, it came a day before the third anniversary of the deadliest shooting in modern U.S. history. 58 people died, 700 others were injured. The settlement comes months after negotiations between victims and MGM Resort International. They own Mandela Bay Resort and Casino in Vegas. The $800 million will be divided up among the more than 4,000 victims. A pair of retired judges will independently determine the exact amounts for each victim. The release of grand jury proceedings in the Breonna Taylor case is now set to be made public tomorrow. Taylor was killed while sleeping in her bed after police fired into her home while executing a warrant. The grand jury decided not to charge any of the officers involved with her death. One officer was accused of shooting into a neighboring home. Taylor's family called for the grand jury transcript to be made public. A judge says the Kentucky Attorney General's office has until noon tomorrow to make the records available. And heading to the West Coast, the U.S. Geological Survey recorded a swarm of small earthquakes in Southern California's Imperial Valley. That is in far Southern California, near the border of Mexico and Arizona. Dozens of tremors ranging from 2.5 magnitude to 4.9 magnitude occurred close to the city of Westmoreland. Now, they were happening in the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is a common source of swarms. At least 45 quakes, yes, 45, were reported within two and a half hours. It was one of the largest swarms ever in the area. NASA says it does more than boost astronauts into space. It's also a big boost for the U.S. economy. The space agency released the results of its first ever agency-wide economic impact report last week. According to that report, NASA generated more than $64 billion in total economic output last year. They say the agency also supported more than 312,000 American jobs. NASA states that every state in the country has benefited because of its missions and initiatives. And former First Lady Laura Bush asking all Texans to turn off non-essential lights during the month of October. She says the lights at night will impact the fall bird migration. Bush posted a video on Instagram from Cornell University saying more than a billion, yes, billion with a B, birds will fly over the Lone Star State to go back home for the winter months. The video says light pollution disrupts the migration patterns because birds are drawn to city lights. Well, there you go. Yeah, interesting. I, I never even thought about it. Well, I've been seeing more. I didn't know about this bird in particular, mm -hmm. but uh, I've been seeing a lot more, uh, I don't want to say complaints, but stories about light pollution. And mm. so this is interesting and how appropriate for the month of October, right? There you go. Nice, nice and dark outside, I guess. <laughs> Ready for Halloween. <laughs> That's right. 641, 55 degrees out. And staying indoors helps prevent the spread of the coronavirus, but it can also take a toll on your physical health. After the break, we're going to learn more about how it affects your body during the pandemic.
Medical experts with CNN say being homebound for long periods of time can weaken your heart, lungs, and brain function. They say if you're not exercising, you're not raising your heart rate. If your heart isn't pumping hard, it gets weaker, and the same goes for your lungs. They say due to inactivity, losing muscle leads to losing strength, which is one of the strongest indicators of how long you will live. In order to keep this from happening, doctors recommend doing things to stay active and keep your body moving. Doctors say exercising can also prevent weakened brain function. They say exercise produces certain chemicals in the brain that break down toxins in the blood, which prevent them from going to the brain. If you're not exercising, you won't be as efficient in breaking down those neurotoxins. Experts also say you may experience weight gain during isolation. This is because while you're stuck at home, eating is more convenient. The best way to avoid excessive eating is to stick to a schedule and only. Eat when you're hungry. You may also notice more back pain and worse quality of sleep. This is because sitting back and lying down all day can affect your posture and strain your back. And Giles Duffield, an associate professor of anatomy and physiology at the University of Notre Dame, also says stretching and walking around after studying for long periods of time can help. And speaking of working out, we are here to talk about football. Northside ISD and Northeast ISD both starting to host high school football games today. But there are a few things you should know if you want to attend. First, you got to buy your tickets online because you can't buy them at the gate. There's also going to be extra gates for people to enter and exit the stadium to limit that crowd size. Fans can sit together in every other row and congestion stands will be open. Finally, make sure you bring and wear that face mask because it is required. Yeah, a lot of people have been looking forward to this, so be safe. Absolutely, be safe. And speaking of being safe, out on the roadways, how's it looking out there? Well, we've got one accident right now we're working on, Max. This is going to be uh, west or North Loop 1604 West, the access road there at Vance Jackson in front of the gas station there. Two vehicle accident looks like it's blocking one lane of that access road. So just keep that in mind if you're heading in this direction. It could get clogged up there, especially going eastbound 1604. All right, we have some heavy traffic right now. This is North Loop 1604 from Bolverde Road to Judson Road. Those eastbound lanes of 1604 are getting moderate to heavy traffic flow and then also westbound as you can see there as well. So traffic is a little heavy in that direction. All right, Fort Tenet Evers right now flowing smoothly. Look at that, looks great there. Fort Tenet Evers northwest side near Bandera Road looking good if you're headed that way. Oh, Mike. Thank you very much. Sir. <laughs> Can't forget about me. Yeah. Uh, you can see in the background and uh, some of those trans guide cameras starting to lighten up just a little bit. Beautiful view yesterday of that full moon. I love the orange glow to it. Perfect for Halloween. And there it is on the live cam picture just about to set. And as that's setting, the sun's going to come up and they'll do just the opposite. Then later on today, right as the sun is setting, the moon is going to be uh, coming up in the eastern sky. Mold, ragweed, pigweed are all on the low side this morning. Yesterday, we did make it up into the uh, kind of mid upperish 80s around the area. It was 87 here in town, had a couple of 90s on the map there, Del Rio and Catula, but we were pretty close to a normal high temperature and we had gained about 30, what, 36 degrees from the low to the high. And that's going to be the situation again this morning. So temperatures right now, we're in the mid 50s, mid 40s out in the hill country and forecasting getting into the upper 80s, maybe a couple of more 90s on the map this morning. So. Once again, about a 35 degree on average rise in temperatures from the low to the high. We're not going to have quite the the span in temperatures as we go into tomorrow as well as into the weekend. We're going to have a, just a hint more humidity around here, and that's going to help to uh, hold low temperatures up ever so slightly, and then we'll kind of get a little trim in high temperatures. All right, in the tropics the past couple of days, nothing has been going on, but right now Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on two spots. One that is just coming into the uh, Lesser Antilles and this batch of clouds here in the Western Caribbean. Obviously not much as of right now, but there is some thinking that maybe these will give us a chance at uh, some rain once we get into late next week. But eh, it depends on what a couple of other factors kind of do. In fact, that area of high pressure right now. 
It's got us in this good northwesterly flow. That's what pulled the front through here in combination with that big trough around the Great Lakes. And that pretty much remains the case. And we have some minor fluctuations with the humidity here. And it's not going to be humid, but just have a little bit more in the mornings. But we still have this same basic flow in the atmosphere all the way through the weekend. Then going into the first part of next week, uh, it looks like there's trying to get another trough to develop here. It's really not going to happen, though, not as pronounced. And here comes these areas of low pressure moving on in here, but this may get in the way to really prevent any decent rain chances. There is a long range computer model that has some rain maybe by next weekend, perhaps, but uh, again, that, that's kind of wishful thinking as of right now. 80 at noon and then high temperature today up to 89. Plenty of sunshine around here. We get just a hint more humidity coming in, so it won't be quite as cool in the mornings. We'll stay right around low 60s over the weekend. Uh, temperatures get trimmed slightly mid 80s tomorrow, and then we go back up with the temperature. So it is going to start to get a little more on the warm side heading into the middle part of next week. Still nice, but still really, really <laughs> nice. Yeah, so ideal. It's really like yeah. yesterday I was outside for like 10 minutes, but <laughs> <Ten> minutes. <laughs> we had sunshine. <laughs> it was like 75 degrees. Yeah. Busy man, Mike. Busy. I'm everywhere. Well, that's true. He, he is. He is. I mean, I'm glad you enjoyed trying to get an appointment with him. Not till December. So yeah. <laughs> when the rain comes, when the rain comes. Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks, Mike. 650, 55 degrees out. And the pandemic can increase stress, which can impact our mental health at work. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we look at some ways to stay mentally healthy in the workplace. And taking another live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that beautiful, beautiful. full moon, October 1st, 55 degrees. Stephanie's daughter's birthday is on Monday. Don't Yay. forget. <laughs> Thanks, Hope you're Jack. Back. <laughs>